you get other benefits as well. Let's do another demo, because I know you all like code. Let's put an index on object ID on that big table with 10 million rows. So it takes a little while. It just turns out that let's say always in my system, I want to do things by the object ID, the column I just index. And that's not uncommon. I'll be, what's the most recently added data? What's the most you know, customer's name, etc. So if we have common things that we do top tens on, we can index those columns. When I run that query, right, 10 rows came back, not being displayed. It's instantaneous. Why is it instantaneous? If we look at the execution plan, it actually said, I can use that index you created and just walk down it in descending order because that's what a top 10 is. Start at the highest entry in the index, walk backwards through the index, get my top 10 rows, no sorting at all. That's why it was instantaneous. If I don't let the database know, if I just say, look, I'm ordering my object ID, which is indexed, but I'm not saying get the 10 rows, the database says table access full. Because the database goes, there is no way in known that I'm going to walk backwards through 10 million individual index entries to sort that data. It's much quicker for me to scan the whole lot and sort it, even if I do have to dump it all down to disk. Because you haven't told the database you only want 10. So if you just do that, and then the application does 10 fetches, the database never knew, it's going to do a full access and a big monster sort as well. Bad idea. That's all well and good to get that first 10 results. What about the next page? You know, the first thing they do when they see top 10 rot, they go page down. Here's my controversial statement. There is no next page. You shouldn't be coding for when someone might do something. That's an inefficient way of coding applications. You have to run a new query because they may never, ever come back and run next page. This is how you can do it. Offset. So get the, rather than getting the first five rows, jump five rows, then get the next five rows. This is some syntax we put in Oracle 12. It's ANSI standard. It's recommended across the board as being the way of doing offset as in pagination. Don't ever do it. <laughs> That's rubbish. That's rubbish. Right? Forget the offset clause. Right? We support it. All the other databases support it. That's terrible. Here's why. When you do fetch first five rows, that's what we do. There's like all the rows from the employee table. We get the first five rows, as you said. What the offset clause does when you do offset is go get 10 rows and then skip five of them. So we're actually running a query to actually go get 10 rows and then throw away five and get the next, right? And that's what we do. So it works. But for starters is tables aren't read only. Some are, right? But while this is going on, people are inserting rows. So if you give someone the first five rows and then come back 10 minutes later and say, offset five, get me the next five rows, this is what they would see. Because I go get the top five rows, which has changed now, and then jump to the next five. So your offset query actually gives you what I would call the wrong results, or an inconsistent result. And in fact, if you're paging down once every 10 seconds, and your application adds more than five rows every 10 seconds, you'd see the same rows all over and over. Because every time you go offset, you actually throw away rows that were new anyway doesn't work. What we have to do is remember where you got to. Get five rows, and in, this is where your application does become useful. In the application, remember that you got down to 3rd of December 1981, and then when you're on your next query, you start from there, and then just get, I should have put the actual extra bit there, then fetch 10 rows. Right, so it's a new query, not using offset, just there's my starting point, give me 10 rows. Get those 10 rows, remember the higher date. Next query is, get me 10 rows starting from there. Don't use offset, bad idea. It's still an expensive query per page because you don't want to be doing this thing too much in advance, but this is where application instrumentation comes in so important. If you monitor your applications well, you'll know over time how many times people press next page. Most people never. You know, it's like when I use Google, look at the first page. If I don't get my result, I'll type in different criteria. But in your application, people might do it on average three times or on average 10 times. So you can find a trade-off here. You can use a thing called result caching to actually get you some benefit. Let's say people get rows in, say, batches of 20, pages of 20. On average, they do 10 page downs, and then they give up. What I might choose to do is actually go get those 10 pages in advance. So I'm sort of taking a trade off here. I'm not getting all the rows. I'm not getting just the first page. I'm getting 10 pages worth right, to do it that way. But why would that be useful? 
I'm going to use a hint called result caching. I'm going to get 200 rows, and then from that two, first 200, go get the first 10. This is my big TX table, so it takes a while. We saw before, it takes about five seconds. Let's see how it goes. Three seconds now, it's a little bit it's in case. Took me three seconds to get those 200 rows. Then they hit page down. So now I'm getting rows 11 to 20. So it's another big query. Instantaneous. Because the result case hint told the database, take those 200 rows and remember them. Remember the result of the query. This isn't buffering, buffering you know, disk blocks in memory. This is remembering the result of your query. So that's instantaneous. Then I can go to rows 21 to 30. And it's still instantaneous. And in fact, until I consume all 200 rows, it'll be instantaneous out of that cache. When I go to row 201, I'll run a big query again, because I'll get rows 200 to 400 and cache them and bleed them out 10, one page at a time. Right, so it's a nice sort of middle ground toward caching and performance. So you can have those nice facilities. So there's the syntax we used, row between, and there's our result cache hint. So pretty cool facility, result caching. And why wouldn't I do this in the application? People are going, I'll just use memcache for that. The cool thing with this is, it automatically controls this table called T. If someone goes and adds rows to that table or changes the result on this, the result cache will be purged. So the database looks after the fact that you won't get inconsistent results. I'm not afraid of